Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday night, and that means another episode of Tech Talk Live with Giles McCoy. So uh, we've got a really good one, right? So we we do this episode every year, and it's one of my favorite ones because I've got one of my favorite people on the show with me, and that is the What's New in Samsung Sound for 2024, and we're joined by Jim Kicek. Jim, how are you? I'm doing great, Giles. It's uh, awesome to be back here again. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure every time, man. And, and there's some exciting things, one super big exciting thing. So everybody yes. make sure that you stick around because, because we're going to cover this one in the second half of the segment. But this is the big news. And if you watch my stuff, you will have potentially seen some of this already. But this is really cool. It's really nifty and we're going to get there. But to get started, Jim, uh, you know, let everybody know a little bit about who you are and why they should care. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so again, my name is Jim Kijek. I'm the uh, vice president of the home audio division uh, here at Samsung. Um, I've actually been here for 17 years. So uh, been here quite some time, uh, really helped to um, develop the category here and, and uh, develop the brand. Um, and I've seen us grow from, um, you know, just a, a simple you know, small soundbar company to now uh, for 11 years in a row, the number one uh, soundbar company in the industry based on uh, uh, Circana data. So it's been a really nice. exciting journey for uh, for me here and, uh, you know, for Samsung Audio. Well, that's cool. And, you know, I think this is the third year that we've done this particular segment. And, you know, from my uh, perspective, it's really cool because I get to, well, obviously have a chance to speak with you and you, you know everything about everything, but I get to see the, the growth and change in the product line. And I really love that unstoppable march of technology that Samsung implements, right? Every year there's new things to, to, to keep the product line on the yes. forefront of technology. And, and it, it's just obvious technology improvements. It's really cool. And that's going to be the theme for 2024, right? The, the new stuff. And uh, to start, let's, let's cover off on some sound bars. So maybe sure. you can introduce us there. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, 2024, uh, there's no shortage of great sounding sound bars uh, in the Samsung lineup. Um, we have products that we're launching um, really across, you know, all the different price bands. There's something out there for, for everybody. Uh, but the one that I'm really, you know, most proud of is our uh, HWQ990D, uh, which is our uh, flagship sound bar. Um, so this, this piece here, I'm super proud of. Uh, you know, the technology that's in it, the audio performance, um, you know, everything about it really makes it um, the best soundbar in our lineup that we offer and really fulfills any need for uh, for any consumer. Um, so when you look at the, the 990, um, it's our 11.1.4 channel soundbar. Um, and the way that's made up is uh, the main body of the soundbar. Uh, there's uh, seven uh, front firing speakers and two up firing speakers. Uh, we have a rear wireless kit that has uh, four speakers as well with two up firing. And we have a subwoofer that make up the, the full 11.1.4 uh, channels of audio. And it's really continues to deliver the most ultimate surround sound, um, you know, that we have out there. Um, that's, that's crazy. I mean, I've, I've got this thing pulled up and you, the, the, I think that's a what a total of like 20, two drivers or something, including exactly, the, the yeah. surrounds. Yeah, yes. that's, that's awesome. That's a lot of sound. And, and the cool, you know, the cool thing is, right. Um, you know, we continue to uh, incorporate our Q symphony technology. So uh, not only is there 11.1.4 channels of soundbar audio, uh, but with Q symphony, when you connect it to one of our uh, Samsung TVs, it helps to utilize the TV speakers and the soundbar speakers at the same time. So not only do you have all those channels from the soundbar, but you also have all the channels from the TV playing as well. And it really gives um, an incredible uh, immersive audio experience when you have all that working together. Um, and there's there's even more technology that we talk that we'll talk about Q Symphony and some other products later on in the uh, the second half. Yeah, and you know I just want to comment on the Q Symphony. So I've got a, uh, oh, it's, it's older models now. It's uh, the 
the frame TV from 21, I think, and the uh, the the S800, I think it is, the slim yep. white uh, from 2022, and uh, and I use Q Symphony with those in in our breakfast area, and it's a really nice experience. It, it I love yeah. the way those work together. And, you know, that's, that's another important piece of things just to digress. Uh, you know, just, just a second here is the, the way that Samsung technology works together in the ecosystem. Right. And that's, that's what I really like about the way these things, they, they bring value to each other. Right. So you could just buy a Samsung TV and you could just buy a Samsung soundbar and you could use those, you know, with Samsung with something else, you know, either way. But when you put them together, the the sum is larger than the the value of the parts, right? Yes. The whole is the is bigger than the the sum of the uh, whatever that saying yeah. is. We we used to call that um, one plus one equals three. Yes, because you're getting more than just the one plus one, right? Because you're unlocking all of these incredible features when you use the two pieces together. Absolutely, and and that goes across the entire Samsung ecosystem. So you know we're talking about audio right now, but. Uh, as a comparison or uh, an additional example, you know, I've got a Samsung laptop and a Samsung, Samsung tablet. Well, you can use Samsung Dex to use those together and extend your screen and, and they work together and give you a great working environment, uh, particularly when you're mobile. And I'm mobile a lot at shows and have to edit and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's nice to have those work together. And then um, you can extend that out to appliances, right? So you can have a refrigerator with the screen and the television and a ring doorbell and somebody can ring a doorbell and it'll pop up and show you on, on your fridge and all this other stuff. You know how, so the, the the ecosystem to me is very important and i really appreciate that samsung considers that when they design products so anyway just an aside for everyone yeah it's, it's a it's really really a great technology story when you pair the two together um you know and we've we've actually taken this model you know there's there's some other features that will carry over and enhance a little bit but there's also some other new features um uh, that we'll be launching because we we always do research right we always you know Try to find out what consumers are looking for. What are their needs? What aren't we fulfilling? Um, how can we make their lives easier? Right, even with a, a soundbar. Right, so we're actually introducing a um, a, a new feature in 2024. It's basically it's called um, uh, like private rear sound. So the way that right. works is, you know, especially with our 990D, you have the rear speakers in the back. Let's say it's late at night. Right, you want to watch your favorite action movie. Right. Uh, family sleeping, but you don't want to wake them up. Uh, with this new feature, what you're actually able to do is um, deactivate all of the speakers in the front of the room. And what will happen is the rear speakers will produce all of the sound, um, not just around surround sound effects, but the full range of sound. Right. So you can easily just sit in the back of your room there, have your rear speakers there and listen to everything that's going on on the TV without everybody else in the house hearing it. So that's one of the new features that we'll be uh, launching in, in 2024. Um, I think that will be my doing... wife's favorite feature, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I think that'll be her favorite because she's always like, turn it down, it's too loud. And yeah, yeah and, and your surrounds are gonna be right to your left and right. Exactly, so that, yeah. that'll make it a much more intimate experience. I like it. Yeah, so and, and this, you know, this model is it's super packed. So this has, everything you know that we've ever developed right in terms of technology so um gaming continues to be a really important you know um uh, functionality that we like to support uh not, not only on our tvs but with our soundboards as well uh so it has our, our game pro mode um that adapts the sound uh to whatever genre uh, you're playing in terms of your games uh racing sports whatever it may be um, and then we also have um, HDMI 2.1 uh, built into it as well. So what that does, it helps to deliver, you know, smooth gaming experience uh, with lag-free sound via 4K, uh, 120 hertz pass-through capability. So um, oh, very this, nice. this really, you know, is the ultimate entertainment device, right, from music to movies to gaming. Right. Yeah. I, that's one of the things that I heard people ask for quite a bit. They're like, what, what can we do with this, with this 120 Hertz, right? The 4k pass through. And it's nice to hear that that's made it into the uh, production unit this year. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, smart things. That's another, that's another big, um, you know, technology, you know, that we have from an overall Samsung perspective, right? So not just looking at audio, but looking across all the lines of business, smart things is uh, one of our strategic, you know, categories or strategic initiatives. And we actually have smart things that's built in 
uh, to our 990D that, um, you know, allows you to have a seamless experience um, for connecting your, your device uh, into the network and getting access to, uh, you know, your voice, music streaming features. And it even has a, a SmartThings hub that's built into it. And the beauty about that is it allows you to control your um, home devices um, via the SmartThings app. Um, so it really, you know, allows you to do so many different things um, other than just playing back audio, you know, content. So it, it's it's a pretty amazing device. That that's that is outstanding, and I leverage smart things quite a bit across my home. Um, you know, I, I think of it as kind of the glue that puts all these pieces together that lets them interoperate as a system. Um, and you know, another thing that I really like uh, about the technology is, um, and this is more on the TV side, but you know, when you have uh, multiple devices and you set up a new one, it brings over your settings. It's just a really wonderful ecosystem to make your life easy, right? You can really enjoy yeah, this technology yeah. in a very fulfilling way. Um, now, outside of the Q990D, you also have a, a, a number of other refor refresh models, right? So the S800D, the S700D. Can we just sure, talk yeah. about those a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, the lifestyle portion of our business, that segment continues to grow. Um, as lifestyle TV continues to grow, so does that segment in soundbars as well, because consumers want to pair their, their audio to their TV, right? Um, so in 2024, we're going to be launching uh, new updated versions of our ultra slim soundbars. You mentioned uh, one earlier before, the S801 uh, in white. So we'll, we'll have two new versions of that uh, in 2024. We'll have the uh, S800D, uh, uh, which is our black version, and the S801D. Uh, which is our uh, white version. Um, and this this is a monster of a sound bar, right? So it's it's ultra thin, ultra slim. It's only about a, an inch and a half high yep. and an inch and a half deep. Um, and there's a total of eight speaker drivers packed into this, um, including two upfiring speakers for true Dolby Atmos uh, performance. Um, and then it also comes with a, uh, a compact, uh, stylish uh, subwoofer as well that you'd, uh, you know, like to easily you know show that put it out in front of the room there it's not you know a traditional you know big black box that you're trying to hide this one has a lot of style to it so it's you know something that can easily blend into the room and something you wouldn't be uh embarrassed keeping out you know in uh in the home theater room there right on yeah and you know if people are curious about that particular model for the the one from two years ago in any event if they want to see an installation video of that i'll put a link down below and you know i i installed this myself i drilled all the holes and i did it all y'all i did it and if i can do it you absolutely can do it and the look on the wall is just spectacular right yeah. you have your television and then this thing it just fits right it's flush you know it, it's it, it is not obtrusive at all but it puts out really nice sound it's, it's a great product yeah and that and that piece that was really designed to go with our larger frame tvs right maybe mm -hmm. a 65 inch and above um and based on the success that we've had with that you know we kind of looked and and you know felt what else was missing in our lineup what's lacking and we really didn't have a, an ultra slim model to go with maybe a frame tv that's 55 inches and below Right. right. So we're introducing a, a new a new model. It's called the S 700 D. Um, you know, in this particular model, it's a three dot one channel uh, sound bar. So it's got a, you know, left, right, true dedicated uh, center channel speaker, um, you know, more of a traditional sub design. But it also has virtual Dolby Atmos built into it. Right. So you can easily pair this up, you know, with a smaller frame TV or really for any TV, you know, for that matter. Right. You know, and it's it's small design, it's compact size. You you know, it's maybe something you'd want to put in a bedroom as well. Um, you know, to keep it from uh, you know uh, standing out too much, right? It'll blend in nicely. It's a small compact uh, bar, but it it basically looks the same. It's an inch and a half tall, inch and a half deep, but it's a much shorter width, so it easily matches up with those fifty five inch and below uh, televisions. That, that's outstanding. That's really really cool. Yeah, I. Uh, I, I hope to see all of these at, uh, gosh, maybe at Cedia this year. Will will you be showing these there Absolutely, then? Or? Yes. Yeah. That and probably a couple other cool technologies and cool products as well. Nice. Well, yeah, there'll be a lot. There's always a lot. And I think that's a great segue into the, the second half of the episode here, which is going to be about a, a brand new, wholly yeah. new product, right? And I'll, I'll let you have the honors of, of unveiling it, so to speak. Um, but what, what are we talking about here? To totally new product. Um, 
you know, so again, you know, we, we like to do research, right? We like to, you know, find out what consumers want, what things they're looking for, um, maybe what things they're lacking. Um, and then we try to, to develop products around that, right? Um, you know, so we looked at a couple different things here. First, we looked at the wireless speaker market. Um, and the wireless speaker market continues to grow. It's, a, it's, a, it's really a huge segment of the industry worldwide. Um, you know, bigger than, than sound bars. Um, and when you look at the wireless speaker market, you know, we've broken into two segments, right? Uh, the portable segment, you know, which has battery built in, taken on mm -hmm. the go, your traditional Bluetooth speaker. And then, you know, uh, the, the home segment that requires it to be plugged in. Um, and when you look at the total industry size, you know, 63% of that total category is that home speaker market, you know, the kind that has to be plugged in Wi-Fi connectivity, maybe a voice assistant built in. Um, so that's a big opportunity there. But we also looked and, you know, surveyed consumers and what are some of the pain points that they have, you know, with speakers, right? Um, and some of them are, you know, easy to guess, right? It's this, the sound quality uh, isn't mm -hmm. good enough, right? Poor sound quality. Um, it's difficult to connect to other devices uh, within my home. Um, they don't communicate or talk together, um, a lack of a voice assistant built in. But the, I, the funny thing is the number one pain point um, in this particular survey that we did is that it doesn't blend into my home's interior, right? Consumers right. nowadays, they want, they want the products to blend in. They don't want it standing out. They like it to be part of the home's ecosystem. Um, you know, when you look at frame TV, right, that's what really made frame TV such a huge success. Right, because it's a TV when it's on, and it's art when it when it's off, and it and mm -hmm. it blends in. Um, and then we came out with the frame matching audio, uh, which is the ultra slim sound bars, the S eight hundred and the S seven hundred D. But we took it one step further, and we're we're coming out with a product that is truly frame matching audio, and we're introducing a product that's called the Music Frame. Um, so the Music Frame, we're, we're super excited to to launch this product. Um, it's it's uh, launching next month. Um, we're actually taking pre-orders on it right now. Um, so if somebody were to uh, to, to do a pre-order before it ships, uh, they can actually get a, a $50 Samsung.com credit that they can use on a future purchase on on Samsung.com for any product, not even not even just audio products, but anything, TV appliances. Uh, so that's one of our pre-order specials. And Really, what what the music frame is, um, you know, it is a traditional picture frame, right? So, you know, you can put any photo you want, uh, provided um, in the photo mat that it comes with. Um, yeah, it, it looks like that's an eight by eight photo. Yeah, or so the, the, the hole in the mat. Correct. Yeah, so it holds an eight by ten picture, like a traditional picture that you would you would buy and put in a, a frame. You would buy at a retailer. Um, you easily detach the back panel. You can put it in. It displays an eight by eight section, um, so it has that full custom custom mobility, right? To, to customize the look of it, um, it does come with a, a wall mount solution, right? So you can easily mount it flush on a wall um, and have it blend in with maybe other pictures that you have hanging up. Consumers would never realize that it's an audio device, right? It, it looks like a traditional music, uh, uh, like a picture frame. Um, it also comes with a, uh, a stand, a detachable stand. So if you didn't want to hang it on the wall, you could place it on a, uh, on a bookshelf, on a nightstand, and really just have it blend in with the home's interior. Um, you know, from a power perspective, to power this device, um, it does come with our, um, what we call our invisible cable, invisible power cable. It's the same one that comes with our frame TV. So it's a really ultra slim, almost invisible power cable. Um, but if someone really wanted to, to make it a custom look, uh, what we're also offering as an accessory is a uh, in-wall rated cable as well. So oh, nice. you can work with this cable as an accessory, um, and then they can easily hide the cable and, and truly have you know no wires and have it look like a, a true picture frame that's mounted on a wall. Um, you know, so that's really around the customizing um, the customability of it. We're also uh, working with. Um, uh, uh, third party right now to be able to produce uh, what we're calling a, a custom art panel, right? So you see a lot of consumers now they're they're uploading their pictures, you know, to um, 
to certain sites and they're getting their pictures printed out on a piece of acrylic um, or a piece of glass, depending on what material they choose. Mm -hmm. We're actually working with a third party right now to be able to offer that for the uh, music frame as well, where a consumer could upload their favorite picture and have a, a panel that's cut to the size of the music frame that they can insert into it instead and really, you know, put whatever they want, have it blend into the home. That, that's um, exciting. Yeah. So, so, and then one other element that we're going to introduce, um, you know, to make it more customizable is a, a white bezel. Uh, so that's coming out in uh, Q2 as well. Uh, yeah. So here, the here's the image ship, of it right there. Yeah. It does ship as a black unit. Um, but then we'll offer a, a white bezel that you can attach on there to, to change the, uh, you know, the appearance, the color to make maybe blend in a little bit more with your home decor. Um, and then, so that's just really the first part of it. But from a technology perspective, you know, this piece has amazing sound quality. And you would kind of wonder, like looking at it, where are the speakers hidden? Um, and they're actually located um, behind the art panel, but on, on the sides. Um, there's a total of four speakers built into the front. Uh, so there's a, um, uh, a tweeter, a pair of tweeters, and a pair of mid-range. And then on the back of it, uh, there's actually two woofers that are built in to produce, you know, the bass. Um, so it's a, it's a true three-way three speaker system uh, that produces amazing sound quality, uh, you, know, um, you know, tuned at our audio lab in Valencia. I've, I've spoken about that lab yeah. you know, many times in your show here. They continue to, uh, you know, really put out some amazing technology and really tune our products, um, you know, the way the consumers really want them in their home. Um, so it has those speaker units built in. But then from a connectivity standpoint, right, I mentioned before, one of the pain points is that consumers have difficulty connecting their devices to other devices in the home. We incorporated Q-Symphony technology into the music frame. So what does that mean? Um, not only can you use it as a great standalone speaker system, by the way, that you can stream Bluetooth or Wi-Fi um, with, but you can connect it to your Samsung TV. A um, couple of different use cases. So let's say a consumer has a beautiful, ultra slim, you know, Samsung TV. Um, they don't want to have a sound bar in the front of the room. You know, they want to kind of keep it, you know, um, pretty simple. They can actually pair a music frame to that TV and the music frame could serve as a subwoofer to produce the lows that maybe the TV isn't producing. Mm -hmm. um, that's one use case scenario. The other one is you know, using it as a stereo home theater system. So you can take two music frames and pair them as a left and a right speaker, maybe with your frame TV, right? So imagine you have your frame TV on the wall, you have a, a music frame on the left and the right, and that's truly frame matching audio now. So you can pair them with your TV and use it as a, as a, a stereo home theater system. Or another use case scenario, let's say you have a Samsung TV and one of our awesome Samsung sound bars you can actually take a music frame and put it in the back of the room and use it as a rear wireless uh, speaker system. For oh, that's really cool. Theater system. And with Q-Symphony, Q right now you have the TV, the sound bar, and the music frame all working in unison together to deliver really the ultimate home theater experience, in, in my opinion. Um, so a lot of great, cool um, you know, things built into this product. And we're super excited to uh, to launch it. It's uh, going to start shipping in April, and again, we're offering um, you know pre-orders on it right now on Samsung.com. Yeah, you know, I I thought this picture that I'm showing now was going to be my favorite use case for it, which is you know a left right in the front. But I think what you just said about leveraging one of these in the rear for surround is is really really cool because I, i'm just thinking about my use case right because you know i've got a tv with a sound bar but there there's no place that i can really effectively put like stands with speakers or something like that yeah. in the back i could put a big speaker on the wall and mount it like that but that's not very elegant i guess i, right, I could right. say but using one of these in the rear that is elegant yeah and it's, like it. it's a true stereo speaker so there's true left and right separation so when exactly you use it as a surround sound you actually get that separation as well when you hear the different surround effects. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, this is a, a super flexible device. I mean, the use cases are many, right? I mean, yes. you, you could really use this and it'll, it, it will fit into your decor because you customize it to be part of your 
decor. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. That's uh so when, when is this going to be available? I know you said they're pre-ordering now and you can get like a $50 off or a $50 coupon to use. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, we're doing pre-orders now through April 12th. Um, and during that time, you know, if you pre-order it, um, you'll get a, a $50, uh, samsung.com, uh, credit to be used on a future purchase of anything you want. Um, and then, you know, April 12th, we'll, uh, we'll start shipping the product. So it's, right around the corner it's coming in a couple of weeks yeah i mean that we it's the 26th right now of march so we are just man it's here yeah it's it's here <laughs> Get them on their excited. super excited about this it's a uh, an amazing product and you know when you look at it you know i think this has the ability to become a whole new category in itself right there's really nothing out there that's quite as versatile you know as this product yeah and for me a and I've heard this, right? So I, I got to hear this at CES and it sounded outstanding. It was really, really good. And uh, it gets way louder than I would have ever expected. Not that necessarily, yes, yeah. you know, volume is, is any kind of, uh, you know, test, but it gets, it, it puts out the decibels and it sounds really good while it's doing it out yeah. of this little small thing. Right. So I, I think anybody who gets their hands on one of these is going to be very, very pleasantly, I don't want to say surprised, but very satisfied yeah. with the, with the output. Um, and then being able to, I, I could just see this in a lot of use cases now. Keep, people will buy television, and for folks that don't want to stay or mount their TV on the wall, they'll put it on, uh, you know, a console, and then they take two of these left to right, Q Symphony it, it in to the Samsung television, and it's gonna be gorgeous and sound right, amazing. Right, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and, and for those, you know, maybe for those who want to fill up their home right with audio, mm -hmm. you can actually use our Smart Things app uh to connect multiple music frames together um and okay. incorporate it as a uh as a multi-room type system oh that's that's even cooler right on yeah, yeah. And, and and i like that option of being able to print the the plate that goes inside of it um and here here's my request it's kind of esoteric but i love it when you can print on metal i don't know if you've seen the big prints that people they'll print it on a sheet of metal yeah uh, as opposed to paper those look so cool um you know that's that's my my stretch goal for you guys <laughs> whatever right. company if they can ha do the the metal plate because it's all reflective and shiny and looks really cool that'd be awesome awesome cool yeah cool. I all I right like well i think that's going to bring us to the to the end of our time here today so uh you know first off i want to say thank you jim for coming on the show it's a pleasure as always and uh, and thank you for telling us about the new technology particularly the music frame right you know the the other items i, I think of as kind of like incremental progress right uh, yeah. but the music frame is is a leap yes so absolutely. that's really exciting absolutely we're super excited about it and i'm really great, uh, glad and have to have the opportunity to uh to introduce it to your uh to your audience here today all right. Well, again, thank you so much. And I look forward to our next meeting and I'll see you at Cedia. And, and I can't wait to see this again. And uh, for everybody else out there, I'll, I'll have one of these in some fashion and I'll get some content out for you because I, I expect this is going to be a very popular one that everyone wants to hear about. All right. Awesome. Jim, take thank care. Thank you again, Giles. Really appreciate it. All right. Um, it's always awesome to have Jim on the show. He's uh, He's one of my favorites. And he always makes time for us, right? It's pretty cool. Now, before we get into you know, the SVS section of the show tonight, um, which is coming next, I want to shout out to, to everybody that's here in the audience. Uh, a lot of people are coming and going, and some are commenting. I wish everybody would comment. So if uh, if you're out there and you're not commenting, please do. Um, but, uh, you know, Hi-Fi Haven's with us. Always great to have him. Uh, let's see who else is here. Um We've got uh, the Brookline Hero, uh, and uh, you know, he commented on the integration of Q Symphony and the the OLED OLEDs. Uh, Q Symphony is pretty cool. I use it on the daily uh, in my uh, breakfast snip area. Uh, Mr. C is here with us, uh, and and I think I answered that in the comments before. But the D is the 2024, and the C is the 2023. So next year would be the E, I guess. Double uh, A is with us. Welcome, Larry's with us. Um, uh, Marv is joined with us as well. And uh, yeah, so the Harmon, um, Samsung bought Harmon. Um, Harmon bought Rune, <laughs> if, if you didn't know that one. Um, so the, you know, the, this company's really, uh, 
doing a lot of stuff. Samsung has got a lot, a lot invested into the audio uh, arena. Um, who else do we have here? I'm scrolling down, looking for comments. Mad Piranha is with us. Always a pleasure. Uh, Mr. Piranha. Um, do, 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 do Marv. Uh, Kevin uh, has joined us and some of these folks might have left already, but maybe not um, Richard and Richard's kind of new, but uh, he is a YouTube member. And I want to, uh, if you're still watching Richard, I don't know if you're still out in the crowd, uh, but I want to send you a personal thanks for that. Uh, this helps support the channel. So I appreciate all of the memberships and everyone uh, that joins the, the Giles McCoy home theater fanatics family. So thank you so much for that. It is very much appreciated. Um, home theater man is here with us as well. Uh, I think he's left. He said he was going to go to bed. So I think he has taken off uh, at this point. Um, uh, super supernova uh, more is with us. And uh I have talked uh, with the folks, the good folks over at uh, SVS, Nick, and I don't know exactly which pieces I'll be getting, but I will be getting something in for review. And I want to get the uh, the big ones and a, and a center. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in just a second here as I start throwing this stuff up and we get into that. Um, and then uh, Suhendra, man, Suhendra, did I get that right? Suhendra and she. Chitu Gubi, oh man, I'm sorry. I know I'm I know I'm I'm hacking it up, but I tried. I gave it my I gave it my best shot. Um, welcome uh, to the show, uh, one and all, everyone out there, and then all the folks uh, that are coming through on Instagram. I stream this uh, kind of on the side to Instagram, um, and a lot. I mean, hundreds of people have come in and out on the Instagram side. A uh, few are hanging around, but. Uh, um, Thank you so much for joining over there. Remember, if you want the better experience of participating uh, in uh, in in the show and being part of that uh, closer audience, YouTube is uh, the, probably the best spot. It's easy. It's there for me to, uh, to to see your comments and respond back and that kind of thing. So you might want to jump over and check that out at Giles McCoy on YouTube. All right, now let's uh, let's. Look for the next thing here. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna present, and I gotta get the. I got this uh, web page teed up so we can talk through uh, the SVS stuff, which is pretty darn exciting. Uh, let me see if I can get this in the screen. Here we go. There we go. All right. So I'm sharing off my uh, my other screen there. And so for folks that don't know, um, SVS uh, has introduced a in completely new line of speakers. And I believe there are seven different models. So I think if you can see this, we've got the Ultra Evolution Pinnacle, the Titan, and the Tower. And those those three are the towers, right? And they uh, get bigger. And, we'll, and we'll, we'll talk through them all, but it's like the smallest tower or medium size and then the big one. Um, although I do kind of wish the Titan was the big one rather than the Pinnacle, because I like the name Titan. Um, there's a bookshelf speaker, uh, the uh, Ultra Elevation. Uh, that's the wedge-shaped one that you've seen from SVS a lot, which is their uh, number one seller, uh, the center channel, and then something called the Nano, which I think is the little tiny bookshelf. So you got this one and then that one. Pictures look the same. Can't really tell the difference here. But let's uh, let's get into these and, and start digging through these a little bit. Um, and I'll be flipping back and forth between screens here. So if you have questions on any of this stuff, um, you know, feel free to drop those in and I will come back and round those up uh, every once in a while. Now, I will say that I first saw these at CES and I did have a very brief amount of time with them and they are very impressive. Um, the, at the top end, uh, we've got the uh, the pinnacles, right? So the Ultra Evolution Pinnacle and these are uh, five grand a pair. Um, underneath that, you've got the Titans, which are four grand a pair. And we go from uh, five and a quarters to four and a half inch on the mid range, and then from quad eight to quad six and a half. So uh, if you look at the picture, you'll see that there are two eight inch drivers on the front of this pinnacle and two six and a half drivers on the front of this Ultra uh, Evolution Titan. What that means is that on the rear of this, uh, there are there's the subs uh, back there. Um, and uh, these pinnacles going down to 24 hertz is pretty darn impressive. This is solidly um, in, uh, you know, kind of audiophile speaker territory now. 
Um, and one of the things that I want to call out, um, yeah, uh, Hi-Fi Haven says the Ultra Evolution series has caught my interest. It's caught mine too. Um, and they're, they're a couple of inches taller, and we'll go over that in just a minute, uh, Supernova, but I think it's two two inches taller. Um, the, the, bigger, the bigger change is the size of the drivers, which goes from six and a half to eights on the, the pinnacles. But the complement, the number of drivers stays the same amongst the three towers. It's just the drivers get bigger and then the units get physically larger slightly. Um, so uh, also at CES, I got to hear uh, the Focal Evo X speakers. And if I remember correctly, those are also at the $5,000 per pair uh, cost, which is just like these Ultra Evolution Pinnacles. And I think those two companies uh, with those two products are really going to be going at it uh, to, to hit that you know $5,000 price point. And I got to spend a lot more time with the Focals um, with a few, much fewer people, because they they had like a room off by, off by themselves, kind of, and and you could sit and listen to the music as opposed to uh, um, SVS, which had these in like a home theater demo, and it was kind of you know, a lot of people coming in and out, and it was like out on the floor, it was a little bit harder to deal with. Um, so I, I don't, I, I can't really give you a kind of uh, you know apples to apples comparison of those two, but I think those two are going to be leaders at that price point. Um, and I can tell you right now, the Focals are freaking amazing for $5,000. They are really good. So I can't wait to hear these pinnacles and, and hear what they sound like uh, for a long period of time. Because my memory, you know, for the short amount of time that I, I was there, you know, they were good. But I couldn't critically listen to them and really understand how good they are. Um, but uh, that's to come, right? I'm really, really excited about that. So, um the uh, the speaker that costs two hundred thirty nine thousand. So there's a there's a bunch of really high priced speakers. Now on the uh, the stuff that we're talking about is much less expensive than that. Um, and the I guess the difference between Focal and uh, the SVS on the cost side of things is that this speaker is the top of the line for SVS, whereas the uh, the Evo X's from Focal are low like high entry level or low mid-range kind of speakers and you know they've got like the focal utopias that are super expensive um and that's likely more in the range of the of the stuff that you're talking about richard um on on the focal side but uh, the ones that i'm talking about are um, you know speakers that are more in the range of normal human <laughs> budgets um you know, in, in, you know, speakers that are up in the quarter of a million price, that's whew, rarefied air right there. You, that's gonna, you know, you can buy a house somewhere for that, that kind of scratch. Um, I love to listen to the speakers. I don't ever anticipate owning any that are that expensive. Um, but these speakers are absolutely attainable for the enthusiasts. Five grand is still a lot of money, but if this is your thing, you know, people buy F-150s and they buy c and all this other stuff that's, you know, thousands of dollars, a camper or whatever it might be. So, you know, this this is completely within the realm of possibilities, I think, for the enthusiasts that really enjoy sound, right? You know, $5,000 set of speakers and another ten grand on top of that for everything else. You got a $15,000 uh, system that's just amazing. Yeah, I think that's totally doable. All right, now let's let's talk about the the sizes just a little bit. So the uh, the difference here between the Titan and the Evolution Pinnacle is uh, two point four six or seven inches. So call it two and a half inches. Uh, the bigger difference is you got twenty seven versus twenty four hertz, right? So um, you you got three hertz of difference, which really isn't a ton. Um, although, man, I I when I look at these two speakers. Um, I think that the proportions on the pinnacle look nicer than the proportions on the Evolution Titan, um, but that's just me. Okay, now I want to skip past the bookshelf and the center and the elevation to get down to the tower. So they have the, this is the quote, entry level <laughs> tower, the Ultra Evolution Tower. It's just called Tower. It's not a Titan. It's not a pinnacle. It's a tower. Um, and this has got dual four and a half inch min ranges, which I believe is the same here. Yep. Dual four and a half. Uh, but from the Titan, we step down from the six fives to the five and a quarters. Right. And then we lose another three Hertz 
um, on, on the low end, right? So we're from 24 hertz up to 30 hertz. Um, and remember, 24 hertz goes a whole octave is 48 hertz. So so we're like half an octave of sound on the low end that we lose um, out of these. And this is 44 and a half inches. So on the, the so it's 44 by eight. So 44, eight, and 16 versus 49, 11 and 18. So you we're looking at, ooh, I guess we're looking at almost four or five inches on the width, right? Uh, and the others are a couple of uh, inches, three inches in, in difference there on, on the height. Um, obviously, the complements are the same, as I said before, but the size of the drivers is smaller. I like the proportions on this one, um, you know, kind of for the smaller compact size, but man, these these uh, big ones, the the pinnacles look kind of kind of beefy and strong. Um, uh, so Supernova, I hope that answers, uh, answers your question there. Um, and anyway, let's, uh, let's move back and look at these others. So three towers, we're going to have two different bookshelves. So we've got the six and a half inch, one inch tweeter version. Um, these are $1,200 a pair. Oh, I guess that's the other thing that we should look at. So, uh, you're looking at four grand on the Titans for a pair. And then we're looking at available in May. <laughs> So I have no idea how much the towers are going to cost, but we went from five to four. So maybe three grand uh, for the, the towers, just a guess, just a guess. All right. So, and we've got uh, $1,200 on the bookshelves and that's uh, one and a six and a half. And then the little ones are one and a five and a quarter available in May as well. Uh, and so these are 12 by seven by nine. And these are 15 by eight by 11. So these are three inches taller uh, with a about an extra inch on that uh, mid-range driver. 40 hertz uh, versus uh, 44 hertz. Three decibel or three hertz, eh, that's not a lot of a difference in the in the extension. Um, you'd want to use a subwoofer, which I'm sure SVS would be very happy to sell to you on both of these. Now, the other, uh, the other two speakers are the Ultra Evolution Center. So this uses dual six and a half, uh, four, 0.5 inch min ranges and one inch. So this is a three way down to 40 Hertz. Now this might match the best with the, uh, the Titan. So the Titan I believe is a 6.5 inch. Yeah. So the, it is the most, most directly compatible with the Titan. Um, however, I still would want to go with the pinnacles. I wish they had a pinnacle. Maybe they'll come out with a pinnacle ultra evolution center. Um, and, you know, this is 800 bucks for this speaker. The Piano Gloss Black will begin shipping in April, or shipping April 5th, which is, you know, 10 days from now or something like that. Uh, and then the last one is the Ultra Elevation. And uh, this this uh, speaker, uh, at least as of a year ago, year and a half, two years, something like that, this was the number one selling product, This the the old version um, from SVS. They, they sold more of these than anything else than they sold, that they sell. Right? More than their subwoofers, more than their speakers. This is the one. So I would anticipate that, uh, again, that will happen. And, you know, a lot of people will just pick up six of these bad boys and throw them on the ceiling for uh, for Atmos, right? Why not? Uh, so good stuff. All right. So let's, uh, you know, for folks that have just joined, um, you know, we you missed out on Samsung earlier. You can watch this back and hear all about their new uh, soundbars and the new music frame. We're talking through the SVS uh, Ultra Evolution uh, speaker line that just released today. Um, and I will have uh, uh, SVS on the show next month to talk about all this stuff as well. But I just couldn't wait until then to talk about these because I'm really excited about these speakers uh, for, for them. Um, Okay, Gary said black oak veneer won't be available until late May, early June. Okay, um, you know, I'm going to click in and see what they've got on offer uh, right now. So let me go back over here and let's go back up to the Titan or no, the Pinnacle and click on this guy. And let's let's go through this and see what we can see. So eventually there'll be three different uh, finishes, uh, piano gloss black, piano gloss white, and the black oak veneer that uh, was just mentioned. And you can pay with Amazon Pay or PayPal credit. Credit. 
Um, and I've got my link in the notes for this video. So if anybody wants to buy these, um, feel free to use the link. It is totally an affiliate link and I'll totally uh, get, you know, 3% or something. <laughs> um, but uh, that would be much appreciated if you are going to buy any of these. Uh, to use the link, it'll help support the channel and keep this stuff going. Um, but uh, you can see, I, you know, th they have absolutely um, followed the lead of some of the very high-end speaker manufacturers uh, dealing with time alignment of their speakers with the shape of their cabinet, right? Um, you know, this uh, isn't quite the same as the what Focal does, but it is similar in concept. Uh, it's also similar in concept to what Wilson does. Um, and those are, you know, many, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollar speakers. Um, so it's, uh, it's cool to see that technology here, right? And this is a diagram of what they're doing, right? So they're trying to give you uh, acoustically centered time alignment uh, so that, uh, you know, the sound from each of the speakers will reach your ear at the same time. So, uh, you know, it there is no phase difference uh, that could cause smearing or other degradation to, to the sound due to the way that the speakers are mounted in the, in the cabinet, right? And, you know, they're, they're really measuring this apparently at where the... Um, kind of the cone meets the voice coil of the speaker, um, which is which is kind of interesting. Now they use a diamond coated aluminum dome tweeter. And uh, really, you know, the, the goal on the tweeters is to make them as rigid as possible. That's why I like Brilliant tweeters so much. And the, the reason that they, that they do that is as the tweeter, if you think about a tweeter like this, and let me, let me see if I can make myself, I blew myself up full size. Um, so, you know, if, if this is your tweeter, and as it moves up and down, what happens is since it's moving so fast, a not so stiff tweeter will have the, you know, the tendency to kind of, the end will come in and the top and it'll, it'll flex, right? And that creates distortion. But if you have a very rigid tweeter, it just, it does this, right? And there's no bending in, in, you know, flex in the, in the top here, right? Compared to the side. So they, they want to make these as rigid as possible. And that's what, uh, uh, the, the, diamond coat does right is for rigidity um and i can remember back in uh, my car audio days in the 90s i guess uh there's a guy named richard garfield and uh, he built a set of tweeters for his car they were these huge horn mounted things that went underneath the the dash um and uh, you know they, he was like oh yeah i used a, a a diamond composite and i'm like why are you use diamonds oh my god what is that's so cool why is it, it's gonna be really pretty blue. I didn't really understand uh, back at the time, um, but uh, uh, you know that's that is what it's for is for that rigidity. Um, okay, uh, and then you've got the the cool little organic cell lattice tweeter diffuser, right? Um, it uses semi-random patterns derived from organic cell structure to improve off access response and maximize listening sweet spot. I don't know how that would work technically, um, but there it is. All right. Uh, now this is a diagram of the the subs, the base drivers in these, right? So there are two on the front and two on the back, and they match on size. And for the big ones, you got the eights, and you step down to the six and a half for the Titans. And the towers have the five and a quarters. Um, you have your uh, five and a quarter inch glass fiber composite mid range drivers on the pinnacles, and you also have a little bit of unrelenting attention to detail. Uh, and you know the, these are some of the comments from publications that uh, that heard these. Uh, I, I don't. There's no soundbite for me here. Where you know, well, where's where's the quote? Giles McCoy. They sounded pretty darn cool. I need to spend more time with. Them. <laughs> probably not the best quote. Uh, although uh, they they these folks probably spent about the same amount of time with them that I did. Uh, but uh, you know they they, they expanded out on that uh, and. Accurate and immersive, a mature product from a company that is elevating its game to compete with a high often whatever. Um, it's all good. Uh, and let's see. Let me go back. And is there anything else that we should look at? So we really look closely at the towers, which are kind of the the big take home. So let's look at these ultra elevations. Um, I want to see what's in here. Are they? I want to see what it looks like. So it's a five and a quarter. You know, they'll they'll have the the finishes that you can get across the entire product line. Um, and, you know, here's a picture of the bracket mounted up to a ceiling there. Um, and here's a, a lifestyle photo of a pair of these set up for Atmos. Down to 48 hertz on those guys. 
it looks like the tweeters are going to be consistent across all of the uh, all of the different speakers. Uh, everything from you know these all the way up through the uh, the pinnacles, and it's really the the mids and the the bass drivers that are are changing. Interesting. Um, you can see here the design. You can see a, a bass reflex port there in the back, and again the unrelenting attention to detail. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right. So we, Richard says SES has free shipping in Canada and their speakers are in Canada, Canadian dollars. That's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, free shipping to Canada. Um, one of the, one of the things in general about SES that's nice is, um, all of what I call the extras, right? So you get to keep them for a long time if you want to return them and the, the shipping is free and they have really good customer support. Um, and I like the team, you know, everybody that I've worked with from there has always been, um, you know, a joy to work with. Uh, really, really nice folks, and and I've enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, but I think that's going to bring us to the end on the Ultra Evolutions, and I want to talk a little bit about content and some stuff that I've been watching and, uh, and some stuff that I like and some stuff that I did not care for at all. Um, so first off, uh, let's talk about the new uh, Ghostbusters movie, uh, Ghost, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I think it was. Um, and it's sad because I went and watched it in, uh, you know, in, in a commercial theater and I did not care for it much at all. It was like an hour and a half of buildup and then like 10 minutes of resolution. Um, and uh, it wasn't super awesome. It was, I mean, it was all right. I did think, I, I think I caught a few minutes of Z's during the movie. Um, it, you know, it, it was pretty plotting there and just, not, not for me. I, I predict this is going to be the last time we see Ghostbusters for a very long time, if not forever, right? Because all you know, they were they were trying to use this movie as a bridge to another generation of cast, right? So they brought back all the living folks uh, from the the previous movies, um, most of them anyway, uh, and just uh, it wasn't super good uh, at, at all. Uh, so. I'm uh, I'm going to give that one a thumbs down from my point of view. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious if anybody else has seen it and if they have what their thoughts were. But uh, the folks that I've talked to that have seen it um, are all in kind of general agreement with me that it was not, uh, you know, the, the best thing out there. Um, so another thing to talk about is Constellation. And this is the, uh, you know, the sci-fi television, ser television series. And I, I don't remember what streaming streaming service is on. Maybe Apple TV Plus. I don't remember. But uh, I watched uh, the first uh, episode of that, and it was okay. But it, it didn't really grab me. A lot of people um, say if you watch it through a bit more, you, it, it, you get more into it. But so far, I'm just not really enjoying the the premise, right? Um, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who who is interested. But it's not really caught my my fancy that much. Now, what has caught my fancy is a, a three body problem. And this one, it, and I didn't know anything about this, but apparently there was a series of books and then there was a Chinese television adaptation of the books into a 20 something episode uh, series that was all based in China, Chinese language, the whole deal. Right. Um, and now Netflix has done this in, 10 episodes or something like that. Uh, so it's much shorter and more concise. Um, and I'm watching uh, the first, I'm about halfway through the first episode right now. And so far I like it. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with this one as my next series watch through and try and get this done over the, uh, the next week, if I can find enough time. Um, you know, usually I watch this stuff, uh, you know, before I'm going, before I go to bed, I'm like, I'll die. Right? Everybody else will have gone to sleep here and, and I'm up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and get 20 minutes. And it takes like three days to watch one show um, because, you know, I'm sitting there like, uh, and so, but I, I want to, you know, kind of uh, stay peppy for it because it does seem uh, pretty cool. So I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, uh, for the folks out there, if there's anything that you're watching that you think is good, uh, you know, feel free to always drop that down in the comments and I, I will add that to my must watch list. Um, and then, you know, as this stuff comes across, you know, I'd really love to to talk more in depth around the content, right? Because that's that's what all this stuff's for, right? All these speakers and TVs and all this stuff is so we can enjoy our content. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really love, I love TV more than I love movies even. And I know that's a hard thing to say, but I really do love TV a lot. <laughs> It, it, you know the, the the shows are longer you, you get more content potentially in a series you know movies come out you know like if you have like a a trilogy you know you might get a trilogy out in like six or eight years um so it's really hard to have you know that story but with a television show and particularly if you roll back the clock 10 years 15 years you you would get se- uh seasons with 22 23 episodes now you're lucky to get 10 um but uh you know, I, I really like having that longer story arc that can go multiple seasons even, right? So, uh, you know, I, I like to see those shows that last five years and it's just one long continuous story arc. Uh, and, and that's good stuff, you know. Uh, and just to juxtapose that uh, a, a bit, you know, if you think back to Star Trek The Next Generation, that was a very episodic kind of show, right? And, you know, they might have two or three show arcs kind of maximum, um, and, you know, the reason that happened is because back in those days, there was no such thing as streaming, right? So if you missed the episode, you're, you know, you're not getting it back, right? You know, if 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 it wasn't taped uh, or if it was before the days of tape, there was no way to see it, right? It, you just, it only was aired when it was aired. Uh, so what would happen is if people missed an episode and it was like a part one of something and they came back in, they, they would lose viewers because they were like, I don't know what this part two is about. I have no clue. Right. So it was kind of a dangerous situation to do long story arcs because nobody except for the true believers, right. Um, were, you know, stuck around to, to watch all the episodes nowadays though. Um, I, I don't watch anything except stuff that's streamed. So, you know, I can watch it, you know, in, in any order and it irks the heck out of me now when they actually release uh, series seasons, you know, one a week and spread it out. I like it when they just dump it all out there and you get all 10 episodes and you can watch them at your own pace and not be artificially slowed down um, by the streaming company. Right. I mean, I don't, but th- there are a handful though. Uh, uh, like the, the one on Apple TV, the Isaac Asimov series foundation. Um, I just, I, I, you know, I watch those as soon as they come out. Uh, so anyway, um, all right, Supernova. Oh, I'm sorry. Van Ghoul says, hello. Welcome, Van Ghoul. And Supernova says, I'm hyped for King Kong and Godzilla movie this weekend. You know, there's been a lot of good uh, Godzilla, King Kong stuff recently. You know, uh, did you watch the TV series um, about Godzilla? Uh, and that was, I thought that was outstanding. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's It's gone, completely gone. But I watched it. I don't know, maybe a month ago. And that thing was really good. And then they just had uh, Godzilla Minus One, which really wasn't a Godzilla movie. It was a movie about a family in post-World War II Japan. Um, and it just happened to have Godzilla, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, that was good too. So, you know, this whole monster, yeah, Monarch, monarch man, Supernova more. You are, uh, you know, Double A used to be the guy who knew everything. And uh, uh it's, it's good, but he, you know, double A used to be the guy that knows everything, but maybe you, you're the new guy that knows everything. Uh, Van Gool, I thought the show Monarch uh, was on Apple TV Plus. Uh, it could vary. Yeah, you're, you're, I don't know, maybe. Yes, I think so. Um, it was good. And uh, I'm really looking forward to another season of that if they do it. Um, but I really, I enjoyed that one a lot. Um, I didn't expect to. Uh, you know, I'm like a so so into the whole uh, Godzilla King Kong kind of thing it's, it's all right um, but uh, the newer ones that are out now including Monarch really have uh, kind of flipped my switch on all this stuff so uh, you know maybe maybe I'll go check out the King Kong Godzilla movie this weekend if I can uh, you know uh, pick up some tickets and, and find it at a good time here I'm sure it'll be playing every hour on the hour. My only my only knock on theaters here is that the one that's close to me doesn't have an Atmos theater. And I don't know why they would build a theater without an Atmos or an IMAX stadium in it right now. It's just kind of silly. But I do live in a smaller town. Um, and if I drive 30 minutes, which isn't that long in the big scheme of things, I can get to Dolby Atmos, like two or three different ones up in Denver. Excuse me. And uh, that's my favorite experience, the Dolby Atmos experience. So 
Um, maybe I can check that out and see uh, what that looks like. Of course, for me, you know, this this year might have already kind of, uh, you know, hit the pinnacle uh, climaxed for movies because Dune 2, right? That, that was my thing. I was so happy for Dune 2 and I was very, very satisfied with the movie. I thought it was really good. Um, even though it's not the book, the book's way better and there's such cool things that happen in the book that didn't make it into the movie, which is kind of sad, but I'm hoping that in the next one, um, you know, that they'll have Alia, Alia, however you want to say it. Um, she is like wicked crazy because yeah, the spoil. I can't talk about this. I'm not going to talk about the spoilers in this one, but it, it's good. But um, we still have uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, Deadpool three coming, and uh, that is going to be kick ass, right? Um, I'm hoping that it saves the Marvel MCU, right? Uh, we'll see. Um, Van Gool says we have an Atmos theater. The IMAX in Colorado Springs is older and don't like the seats. You know, the I agree. The some of the older IMAX stuff. They don't have like recliners, right? They've got like, you know, seats that they're the hard ones. They rock a little bit, but they're they're not they're they're, they're not super comfortable. Uh, movies are so expensive. I always hit the bad name. You know, we do the same thing. So, and we go watch a movie. It's four of us, and uh, uh, the matinee helps save a lot of money. But man, like a like a like a large soda or a Slurpee or something, they're like seven bucks. You buy like two two drinks you're like 15 bucks in and i'm like dang <laughs> i'm telling the boys we're like drink some water before we go <laughs> i'm turning into that dad now i'm all like let's sneak in something um <coughs> it's pretty funny um all right uh richard says i think the atlantic technology 8600 ec center channel speaker might be a lot better than the svs center channel speaker uh for one thing it costs a lot more um I think it's also going to be huge uh, on on the size. I mean, that 8600 EC is really big. I've got the 8600, no, the, whatever the new one is. The 80, it's the 8600i, right? E, uh, the yeah. So I've got the the new one upstairs right now, um, and it's massive. And then the prior model, um, it was humongous as well. So I think both of those are larger than the center from svs so richard i think you're absolutely right about that um did you buy the collector's popcorn bucket look at my ear and then look right here what do you see what is it yeah baby that's the new collector's popcorn bucket right there that's some crazy stuff um <laughs> that thing is it's the weirdest popcorn bucket ever um and so what's funny about that uh so on release day I went to the theater um, here in Castle Rock and it's a little theater and I went in and they had like 800 of these buckets sitting around and I just walked up to the front. I'm like, Hey, can I buy a popcorn bucket? And the, the guy was all like, Ugh. and so I went back and bought it and I didn't get the popcorn. Right. Uh, well, I had them put it in a separate thing because I didn't want to get popcorn all over the bucket. And then I came home. But when I went to watch the movie um, in the Atmos theater up in, uh, oh, it's not, I guess it's Highlands Ranch. Um, they had none, none at all. Uh, so I'm happy that I actually bought it instead of waiting, thinking that I would get it when we watched the movie because those two days later or three days or whatever it was, they were gone. Um, so sad, sad times for those folks. Um, have I heard that uh, Arundel 1723s? I have not. I would like to. Um, and if they send out a pair, I'll do some content about them, but I have not heard them. Um, so I don't, I don't know what they sound like. Um, and I, I hate to say it. I don't necessarily trust other reviewers. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what their tastes are like. Uh, so, you know, I like to hear things with my own ears so I can uh, give my own opinion about them. Uh, I have their big subwoofer and that thing is a, it's a monster. It's a beast. So if, uh, if the 1723s are of the same quality as their sub, at least they're that one sub, uh, then I, I would anticipate they'd be okay. But, you know, speaker sound is uh, subjective and it really depends on the listener, right? Because, you know, you'll hear people say, I love BMW. And then somebody goes, I hate BMW. And then I love uh, Focal. Oh, I hate Focal. I love SVS or I hate SVS. So, you know, it's, it's really, uh, really depends on your personal taste when it comes to speakers. You know, there are certain things that can make speakers uh, 
you know, like function and measure better. But for speakers, I always say you should listen to them. And if you're going to mail order speakers, then just, you know, get some that where you can return them easily if you don't like them. Um, Interindle does that. SVS does that. Starsound does that. All the guys uh, do it. Um, but uh, but I, I think they, they look good. Yeah. And, and they just they don't go to any of the shows, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, Mad Prana says, do you have an audio review music playlist? Uh, I am in the process. It's funny that you mentioned that, but I, I am in the process now of developing my playlist that I use for reviews. And I'm going to post that up uh, so everybody can can kind of see that same music set that I always use. Um, I, I've got it like scattered in different places right now, but I'm going to do that. Uh, Mad Prana, is there a service that you use that you would prefer to see the playlist uh, published in? Um, and I, I say that because I primarily use Cobas. Um, I don't have a title subscription at all. Um, uh, and, you know, I've got like basic Spotify. Uh, so, you know, I, I can definitely get that out in Cobas uh, and Spotify. Spotify, um, but the title might be harder. So if you have a, a preference, let, let me know, but I will, I will get that out. And I plan to have it done and available, uh, by Expona time, um, because, uh, I'm going to have that available in this, probably use it quite a bit in the Stark sound room. So I'm going to be, uh, well, I'll talk about that in just a minute about the, about the show. Uh, Van Gool says, I agree with you on reviews. It's all about the person in their room. Yeah. And, and man, you hit on the other piece for me. Those are the two biggest, uh, differentiators or changers of sound, right? So the number one item is going to be the speaker, um, because you know, speakers sound vastly different. And then the second piece is the room that you put it in, right? Those are the two biggest things that you can do to tweak your sound. If you can get those two where you want them to be, that is like 95%. Uh, and, you know, assuming that your other components are good components, right? You can get bad components and make things sound horrible. But assuming all your other components are good, then, you know, those are the two big no knobs to, to turn. Everything else is very subtle, right? So, you know, difference between DACs, probably immaterial for 99% of people. Cables, probably immaterial for 99% of people. Now, when you swing the needle over to the audiophile world, audiophile world, that one last percent, you know, it's the, there's a lot of stuff that happens inside of there, right? So there's a lot of a lot of discussion in, in that world. Uh, but I, I think speakers in room is is the one. Um, Matt Prana says, anywhere you put it, I can copy it to whatever server. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I can I can also, uh, maybe I'll make a video about it and right? go through um, the video. Oh, here's another video that I'm going to make. Uh, the top five audiophile foods. And I, I would love to get people's input on the top five most audiophile food. And this is a just, you know, it's like a comedy uh, video. So, you know, I was going to be like, a, like one of them would be Wagyu beef. Um, and, and it's the most audiophile food because the ingredients are, you know, crazy stuff like, oh, we feed our cows beer and we massage them so it makes them taste better. Right. And it's kind of like a cable anal analogy. We freeze our cables and they sound better kind of thing. Right. Um, so, so the Wagyu beef, right. And also it tastes like other beef, but it's, you know, 10 times more expensive. <laughs> so that's an audiophile food. And another one would be uh, like teppanyaki. Right. So, you know, you go and they do the big show and everything. And, uh, you know, that would be an audiophile food because, you know, there's a lot of show there, but you get something that's kind of like ho-hum, but it's all about the show. Doesn't you know what you really get doesn't matter, but it's it's all about the show. Maybe, you know that's another funny one. Um, and another thing, I was trying to figure out how to do this, and I, I didn't come up with a good way to really um, explain it. But the idea is that in audiophile systems, you know, they break out all of the components. They don't just have like most of the time. It's not just like integrated, and it's got like your streamer, and it's got your DAC, and it's got your amplifier. You know, it's all in there, and you just plug in speakers. They they prefer to break everything out, so you've got like a turntable and it's got like a separate motor and then you've got like a streamer and it's got a external power supply and it's got these big USB cables or whatever. And then you've got a DAC and it's got an external clock and then it goes to uh, you know, a preamp and then you goes through an external analog only crossover. And then it goes to, you know, mono blocks amplifiers for each speaker in each channel of this. Right. And so it's all broken into pieces. So I was thinking like a, like a deconstructed salad or something. Right. You know, because all your ingredients are all splayed out, but, you know, you just eventually all eat it and put it in your mouth, right? Uh, so that, I don't know. So I'm just kind of come up with 
that that's three audio file foods and i just i wanted to do five and i haven't thought of what the other two might be but that's going to be um one of one of my videos coming up for a little bit of humor <sighs> all right i think i've just about talked myself out for the evening so um if there are no other questions as i swallow this piece of ice i think i'm gonna start wrapping it up so uh stuff coming up in the future um the uh, expona show is coming up in april and i will be covering the show and i'm also going to be working the room uh, for stark sound a bit helping those guys out uh set up break down and, and i'll be in there uh, for a good while helping them um, and then uh, i'll be running around filming everything i'm going to have a uh uh, a, a friend with me, a producer with me, that's going to be taking some footage as well. So we'll get that show covered and everything uploaded so everybody can check out what's going on. Um, SVS is going to be there. Uh, they're going to have two rooms this time, from what I understand. They're going to have a multi-channel room, and then they're going to have a two-channel room. So they are really getting big in, into everything now. Uh, later in the month, I plan to be in Malaysia at the Northern AV uh, show in Penang, Penang, Penang. Uh, Malaysia. I'm looking forward to that one. Wilson Teo uh, is showrunner there, and I'm excited uh, to to get over across the pond uh, and back over into Asia. It's one of my favorite places to visit um, and eat some really good food and see some really good uh, uh, equipment, listen to some great music, and they're going to have some really cool concerts. And I'll, I think I'm going to end up doing some panels and some tourism uh, videos and other stuff like that. Um, uh, funny segue, funny aside, uh, my wife and I do a travel channel together. I don't know why I did it quotes. It's a real travel channel because we travel and we make videos about it. Um, but we just got a request from a Korean travel show to use some of our footage in one of their, uh, episodes, right? So I think we're going to do that. Um, uh, and, uh, hopefully we can get credited there. That would be pretty fun to put up on the IMDB, uh, uh, comment, um, uh, I hope uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds comes back. I uh, really like that series. Uh, but see, yeah, I've seen uh, uh, SNW uh, season one. Season two is still on my to-do list. But I agree. It's an excellent show. Um, I'm a big Star Trek fan, um, and I like all of them. I like some more than the others, but all of them. I even like the animated stuff. I, I'm watching through the most recent um, uh, se uh, season of Lower Decks right now. And uh, I love that too. So yeah, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, super, super good show. Uh, love it. Um, uh, back to, so yeah, so the Malaysia show um, and that, so those will be the two that I'm at in April. Uh, and then after that, it'll, I don't have anything I don't think planned until June, which is going to be the home, home entertainment show in Costa Mesa. Um, I'm really excited for that one. A lot of good friends are going to be there. Um, and, and, you know, if there's going to be, if any of you folks are going to be at Exponent, let me know. I'd love to get together, hang out and chat and talk about stuff. Um, and you know, you, I, it'll be easier to find me because I will be in the, uh, the Stark Sound Room for a while and I'm happy to, you know, sit down and talk and chat about stuff. Um, I, it's, it's always fun to, to see everybody at the shows. And, uh, you know, if there's anybody on here that needs a pair of tickets, I've got an extra pair of, uh, tickets available for, uh, for the exponent show. So if you need to go and you don't have tickets yet, uh, let me know and I can get some, uh, some lucky person hooked up with those. I'm just waiting for someone to ask for them. Um, they are available, uh, right now, but it needs to be for someone who really plans to go. Um, all right. Uh, for content, uh, coming up, I've got, uh, Two live streams on Sunday. I've got the uh, Hi-Fi Mafia live stream doing weekly Hi-Fi news. Um, and, you know, we'll cover some of the same stuff that I talked about now. We talked about this, uh, the SES stuff last week. So we cover all the new news each week um, and other fun things that we just want to talk about, right? Um, and then uh, later in the evening, I'm going to do uh, Unbox Live. Uh, and I will be unboxing the uh, Kef a cube 15 inch subwoofer, which is set up in my living room right now. And I'm going to bring uh, Drake in as full time uh, co host on the on Unbox Live. He runs uh, he runs the cameras for me, and uh, he will be uh, reading out all of the uh, the comments and other things that come across. And he'll be on camera just a little bit um, to help out on on that. 
uh, man prana says keep missing hi-fi mafia live streams yeah i've uh, i'm trying to schedule them a little bit uh, sooner now so that people get more warning of when they're coming but they're going to be every sunday at two mountain four eastern um and then unbox live will be on sundays at four mountain six eastern and then this show is every tuesday at seven mountain <laughs> yeah so yeah I, i've uh, dedicated um three three uh three live streams every week so i've got at least three hours of content coming out and i'm trying to do an edited video every week as well uh, for four hours of, of content the uh, the live stream stuff's way easier to deal with because i just do it and it ends up being whatever it is and then i don't have to worry about it right it's just done right um although i do have to schedule all that stuff and for the unboxings i have to th have things to unbox and i don't know that i'll be able to have 52 things a year to unbox um i'm getting some weird things in just as you know stuff you know just stuff right like uh, i have a robotic pool cleaner coming that i'm going to unbox that's right you heard it here robotic pool cleaner um, which is kind of exciting although i don't have a pool and I'm never going to clean a pool, but I'm going to unbox this thing and see what a robotic pool cleaner looks like. Um, and then, you know, like a, on Unbox Live, uh, you know, I'm going to unbox a new computer case, but then I might also build, migrate all my stuff into it live as well. So that'll be another thing. Um, so all that stuff is to come. Um, and like I said, for anybody that's going to be at any of the shows, please let me know. Um, love to, to hang out and catch up. And I think... I am done. All right. Everybody out there, thank you so much again to Richard. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Zagowski, maybe. Um, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. If anybody else out there wishes to become a member, you can find that membership on YouTube and it would be much appreciated. Um, gives me all the feels. So thank you so much, uh, Rich. I really appreciate that. Everybody else, see you guys in the next one.